time on just to see how far it is. Oh cool. On a surfboard in the Bavillons. I mean who would have thought? What we're about to do now is head all the way through the Bavillons, which I haven't done before. Heading on this gravel road out of uh, Bavillons towards Willowmore. I saw a sign saying Babe Savinkel. You've just got to stop and meet babes. So like a black, ne? And these babes. Well, yes, see. I say a babe. <laughs> it's like the longest, longest I've ever spent on a gravel road. I could kiss this tar right now if it wasn't 40 degrees. Just down the road, Willowmore. So happy. And I keep saying it. Incredible, incredible. It's just, you just can't stop marveling about how beautiful our country is. From Kierfontein, where we left this morning, to a place called De Flucht. Hoe gaat het? Heb jij een moerse lekker koek? Look at that little house. I mean, it's we're talking going back to Thomas Bain's day, the squirrel hazy. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to uh, meet the owners and uh, get some history on uh, on this incredible little little can I, I can't even call it a town little settlement really really stunning come come on look here look decided tonight that we uh, are not going to do the rooftop tent. We want to try out the two-man tent that I've got from Front Runner as well. I think it's actually quite handy when you go overlanding to have that option because let's say we wanted to drive into town, we were spending three or four days here, <laughs> our tent's on the car so every time you've got to pack everything up so I think it's quite handy to have that. Uh, Rayna said I should read the instruction manual when it comes to folding the thing up um, but opening it he said is really really easy. So you just throw it in the air. I suppose I first got to undo all these clips. Okay, so apparently I'll just pour it. Jeez, off. Okay, he wasn't joking. Uh, that's, that's actually bloody amazing. See you tomorrow when I'm trying to fold this thing up. inflatable mattress in the, in the tent fits perfectly and I bought apparently you can't use the compressors I bought this little thing to inflate it and uh, oh, let's see if we get air Good. oh okay a couple of ends quite quite nifty I mean there is always the um, this thing what, what, what do you call it? I find these things in every box. The guys never read it. Oh, instruction manual. Yeah, I prefer screwing up the first time and then reading. Let's go see. Yeah, that's easy enough. Looks like they're like three different connection ends. That one seems to fit. That fat, am I? Tent pitched and the beds made. It was time to unwind in front of the fire and tan some meat. 
before spreading out for the night. It's um, three o'clock in the morning. And I'm here to tell you that these inflatable mattresses are cuck. What a waste of bloody time. Um, I literally may as well just have put a towel down and gone to sleep on the dust. Um, I'm lying flat on the ground, nothing left. Um, yeah. So a word of advice is like, just get yourself a rolled up foam mattress or something that you can use. Because I'm now thinking I've got like, I don't know, an hour and a half till sunrise. Sleeping on the floor. Wow. Neither. Right, so I know I was moaning a little bit this morning about having to sleep on the hard ground. Hard ground is hard ground, but when you wake up to a view like we've got here this morning, it is really, really special uh, in the flucht. And it's cool to catch up with uh, Ursula and, uh, and John. Talk to me about the flucht, because I mean, I've passed through here quite a few times and always thought, who lives here? What is the history behind the flucht? Yeah, I think it all started when Thomas Bain started the class. Did he also do the Swartberg Pass? He did the Swartberg Pass indeed. And Bain, Bain. Yeah, yeah, because when you go through there, you can still see the old jail, the yes, old jail house on the right, side. I mean, they should do that with our criminals today. Yeah, We've got enough of them. We can keep, them, keep them busy, do, do, busy doing, doing our roads. We came here nine years ago. We worked flipping hard, yeah. <laughs> but it is a wonderful life. John, what made you come to the Flucht? Um, the owner over here is an old friend of mine. He would like us to to manage his place and uh, this is how we got here. It's incredible when you meet tourists, how many of them know more about our country than we do. And that's what we try and do, is put a place like this on the map that people say, hey, instead of driving through, let's stop yeah, and let's spend time. time. Yeah. We do um, off the beaten track yeah. and we always find new routes. And every time when somebody asks you, where do you live? Even people in play. You yeah. say to flop, you say, where's that? Where? where? It's, that cra it's crazy. It's crazy. People they just don't know. School AC, I mean, it is such, such an unbelievable little right. location. You walk inside the way, the way you guys have kitted it out, it really is something quite special. It is. Colin, who lived here, phoned me and he said, I know that you know many people that would love to maybe come and live here. Do you want to sell the place for me? And I said, oh, no, no. I said, I don't want to, but I will try. Yeah. And then the owner happened to be here. And I thought, I'm just going to take a chance and say, Colin is selling next door, would you be interested? And he walked through and he said, what do you think? And I said, yes, yes, yes. And he put the deal through. And here we are. And then um, we started with our own stuff and our own work. We renovated, we did the floor and the roof painted the ceiling and the bathroom and then I did all the soft furnishings and I thought it just came together so nicely. It's, and I just uh, it's amazing. It's, so it's just, it gives me a warm, mm. lovely feeling. I've never had a job like this in my life. I think it's absolutely amazing. We met a few people who, who actually were, were at school over here. And we also know people very well. The, uh, three sisters were born in the house that we, we live in. Yeah. Our house is an 1884 house. But it surprises me that, you know, homes like this aren't legislated in terms of you've got to look after them because they're I natural, know. they're national treasures. They're supposed to come under the uh, auspices of the National Heritage. Um, I've forgotten what the yeah. name is. It. Remember in the old days they all have these plots? They're, they're yeah. Have this, yeah. historical monument block. But even those historical monument blocks They've now made it out, out of plastic because people, people steal them. People are stealing them for, for scrap metal. I mean, everywhere here, you're trying to be as environmentally friendly, leave as, as small of an imprint and footprint as possible. You've probably noticed the water running over there. That standpipe is there, so I can see it from our deck. Oh, and so I you can see that it's running. Water. We put in 
two and a half kilometers of, of pipeline up the river in, in the Prince Alfred Pass. That's sending the water from down the that pass is, to you? It, yeah, and it's coming down the pass it's to gravity us. Fed. It's all gravity fed. And, and uh, the excess over here flows back, back into, into the Back into, and I can swim there. Yeah, yes. you can swim it's in not there. clean now because winter is just over, so it's not been cleaned. It doesn't yeah, matter. Lots of sediment the water there. I'm going to put my surfboard in there. <laughs> Every time I find water when I'm not near the ocean, I'm going in with my board. This is surf school, Lady AC. I love it. Ooh. Day four. Five, four. Day four. Perfect. And thanks for the coffee. I haven't had my rusky, but I'm okay, going to do that now. No, it's ama it's amazing. It's really if, if you want to, you can quickly come and have a look at our old house, and then yeah, then we ask you to come. That'll be awesome. That's why we look so good today. <laughs> Our makeup, even. <laughs> <laughs> Dates from 19, uh, 1980 when I first joined the National Park. It's been around, eh? And it's been around, and uh, <laughs> it's one of those one of those things that you know. It, it, very, very difficult to part with. <laughs> no, listen, I, I think in Afrikaans it had Hoden. It's a character hat, eh? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> John and Ursula live a life in tune with nature, growing their own vegetables and producing honey which they sell. But they're also committed to restoring the natural vegetation to the area, leading the way in removing the alien wattle trees in the valley. What's that, boy? What's that? What's that? What's it? Is that a kitty cat? Hello? Hello? As you can see, we've left this task till last because I was warned that there could be a lot of swearing and cussing going on. And I'm reading the instructions. We'll give this a try. Just to make it clear, the instructions didn't say you've got to do it in a red speedo. I decided to do it because I knew I was going to break out into a sweat. And now I'm going to go for a swim. Oh, it's actually not bad if you read the instructions. I had it the wrong way. Done. Okay, we're having a bit of a escape back to our normal reality. A uh, proper little pamper session. We've headed into Nisner, a place that I mean you all know really, really well. And we are getting spoiled. We're staying at uh, the Elephant Hide tonight. Every time I come to Nisner, there's one place that I go to, and that is Nadine's. Uh, not only because it's pet friendly, but the owner is super cool. We always have a good catch up. And the food is damn fine. And I see they've got uh, lamb pie on special today. That is me sorted. Oh, you know what else is pretty special? It's a short drive from PE to Nizer, so I've asked my folks to come and join us for the night so we can have a, have a cool catch up. And uh, they brought uh, their dog Tammy as well. Tam Tams. Hello, baby. Hello, mom. Hi. How are you? I love Are you good? How are you? Hello. Where are you? How are you? You're good? Yeah, all good. Hello, Dad. Very Are you well? Yeah, we're alive. Tam Tams, hello. Hello, baby. Well, I couldn't agree more. Great coffee, yummy lunch, and I got to meet some locals. W what are we doing? We're trying to get rid of her? 
Beautiful beauty. Did you get sanitized? <laughs> you get hospitalized. I don't know, sanitized. <laughs> Beautiful. I think we are in for a proper, proper spoil. Wow. I'm looking at this and thinking it should be just to see how long it is. <laughs> Different show, so childish. Um, anyway, you know what? I'm realizing day four, the joy of overlanding and kitted out the way we are is that we can stay in a rooftop tent, we can throw down a two man tent and go and explore. But it's also great if you just want to spoil yourself and just say, you know what, I need a day or two days just to check into someplace that is absolutely, yeah, and move away from the camping glamping and just rock out proper uh, you, you can and that's what we've done i mean we're staying at elephant hive which is just unbelievable the view looking into the niza lagoon is is just otherworldly amazing and i haven't had a shower since leaving home four days ago sure i've been in the water but you saw the water was pretty muddy um, at branky's crawl and i swam in the little lake dam this is actually going to be the first time my body is going to get soap. Aren't you glad you're not traveling with me? Cheers. What an amazing trip so far. Mm. Hang on. This is the executive suite. I've got bubbles. Let me chip out. Squeaky clean. An afternoon just chilling. Playtime for the dogs. Gaske. And a wonderful evening with my folks and new friends where I wasn't on bride duty. Hashtag ultimate bra master. I'm very 2020 lockdown edition. I'm very impressed, eh? What a day. Good night. It's day five and I couldn't think of a more beautiful view to start the day with. The beautiful Niza Lagoon. Um, I tell you, I needed a good night's sleep, which uh, is exactly what Elephant Hide provided me with. Uh, am amazing. So quiet, so peaceful. No, is this how you meet your uh, guests, right? Uh, <laughs> hey, this is, is this African service? African service. Morning. Uh, you guys had a good evening. <laughs> We can be fishy. Fishy, officially, you the guy in charge, eh? Yeah. Eh? Is this how he always dresses? Yeah. Ah, ah so there we go. <laughs> eh? Well, after a quick refresh, Ryan was back to talk to me about elephant hide. There's something really unique and special here because you've got everything, but it does feel like home. You feel super comfortable here. Yeah, I think we, we sort of, we, we top end of the four star market. So, um, you know, not without being, we, our, our sort of motto has always been sort of barefoot luxury. Yeah. So when you feel at home and, but you still get the, the little mod cons that are available obviously in the suites and what have you. And as you say, coming off, a, coming off if you've been overlanding and you're coming into a little bit of luxury, it's probably the nicest thing you've ever done. How long have you had elephant hide? Yeah, we, we actually, myself, my mom, my brother, uh, 16 years ago, we, we had this wacky idea to come down to Nisland and we originally wanted to buy a guest house. We looked at different properties and for about two years we, we found and eventually a guy called Chick Ramsey came up um, with the idea of just buying a property and said we, we took a, brought us up there literally to where we're standing now and this is just bush and we walked through, I'll never forget my mom and I walked through this bush, got to the edge of here and we're going um, 
Okay, let's change our let's change our game plan. We said, okay, well, let's build our own own thing, something that we that resonates with us and that, that tells your story. That tells exactly, and that is us that we we feel passionate about and whatever. So it started with the main lodge, and then we built five five units on, um, and and it sort of grew from there. And then we um, you know we built the executive suite on, then we built um, put the family suite on, and and eventually the two bedroom suites. So we landed up with nine suites. 15 years later, here we are. I'm imagining, I look at this and I'm going, this is geared up to the foreign market. Very much so. Yeah. And uh, nicely in itself as well. Yeah. But it must be hard at the moment with COVID and lockdown. No, it's been it's been a tough ride. You know, we we basically we basically had a race that we started 15 years ago. So it's like starting a new business almost and reinventing your whole markets, you know, obviously gearing more towards South Africans at the moment. Um, and in saying that, it's, it's nice to also have South Africans coming. I don't know what the future is going to bring, you know, for tourism. My biggest thing is to keep our staff. Yeah. So we want to, you know, you, they, they, they've been family with, they've been with me for 15 years. Fishy, Johnny, Bully, they're all, um, they're, they're part of us. So you can't, you know, I'm not going to, we're not going to just drop them at a, at a at a coin toss, so you see that for so me is hold on as long as possible. Yeah. Ryan, that for me is massive, massive respect. And it's been also meeting you guys, and it's really well, cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I want to say last night we were having a really cool bra. It's yeah. the first time I've ever seen a woman do the braing, yeah. but I mean, yeah. welcome, welcome to NASA. Yeah. Think, things are different. <laughs> yes, but you were yeah. telling me when I'm done with my little trip here in South Africa, yeah, you're going to show me how it happens cross border. Is that is that a deal? Love to, love to, love to, love to. Pack, pack your bags, let's go. Late, 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 as always. Uh, I've got Ryan from uh, General Tires, who is uh, joining us for this part of the trip. We're going to do the seven passes. Um, Ryan, please tell me that the weather was not your doing. Definitely not. You're obviously camping with us. Definitely not, Boris. It's raining. I'll be no, in, man. I'll be in a BNB. So I'm going to be roughing it while you sit and chill. In your rooftop tent. Nice. Nice to have you on the trip. <laughs> Do not count the sheep. Do not count, count the sheep. Do not. Going? I am with Nazna. Where have you come from? Oh, let me take my thing off. Um, where did I come from? George. So, how yeah, long does this yeah. take? Ah, quite a long time for me. 76 kilometers. And, so, uh, and where do you live? Uh, Harwick. Okay, explain yes. what are you doing? Because <laughs> I'm on a bit of a trip around the country. Are oh, you doing are you? the same? Oh, cool. Yes, I'm doing the um, Cape Cross, which is a, it's a cycle tour that's been set up by the Cape government yeah. as an initiative to get pedal power going in the country. That is and cool. That. What's yeah. your name? Julia. Julia, have Am you I got to be on TV? You are. How do we like what social <laughs> media stuff? How do, can people follow you? What's the. Oh, I, um, I run a small business called Spectrum Tours. Yeah. And so I've been posting on that, but otherwise. I'm low profile. I love it. Just I think it's I think it's so cool. Yeah. That is really yeah. amazing. Yeah. Good. Cool. Sa safe cycling. But where are you? No, so we're doing a 30 day kind of unlock South Africa just oh, to see how, nice. how far it is and going to all the places oh, that are awesome. off the beaten track. Yes. And trying to tell stories of the people that are living in little places oh, like awesome. De Flucht and yes. off the grid spots. So that's lovely, what we lovely. that's what we're doing. There's a cool little um I've I've forgotten what it's called. I've got a little pamphlet. Um but speak to this guy, he's very articulate, very sharp. Um, and he runs this African African Experience Bush Cafe, and it's a uh, MPO um, where he takes in people and teaches them skills, like practical life skills. Um, and we've got a business a cafe and a um, 
like a little and craft a shop, shop and, and a coffee shop. How yeah. far down is it? Not far. Trust okay, me. maybe it's maybe about two hours to ride, but I think by by, by so, car it's gonna take about ten minutes. So I need a coffee break. Yes, you definitely do. Sadly, we just did not have enough time to stop at the African Experience Bush Cafe and Craft Shop, but it is on my hit list for next time. Onward we pushed our final destination, Victoria Bay. Cheers, boy. That is not coffee. No. It's water. <laughs> it's you know, the holy water. <laughs> Dry water. What, but what a, what a lucky day. I've never... I've, have you done the seven passes? You haven't? No. And even that little bit we did, that phantom, the phantom forest, but I also hadn't done... I mean, I've done, I've done a bit of sevens coming from George down that way, but never, never linked it all the way through. It was actually beautiful and raining when we started canopy of trees man we live in a good place eh? stunning but you know this place well eh? you come here you tell me you've, you've kayaked up the river such Special a good place it's a good place eh? mm. it's um surprising in that just behind you you've got all this nature yeah and you've got these beautiful gravel roads when you hear a map of africa you think what's that yeah but the the vistas from there absolutely magnificent you've got ocean lagoon mountain forest it's yeah. pretty much We've stayed at a house in wilderness um, above the beach and you see the shadow, you're in the garden, you see the shadow and you think, what the hell is that? A plane's about to crash <laughs> and, it's a and here comes the paraglider past you. <laughs> oh, he's probably seen a lot of topless girls as he comes around. <laughs> That's why they jump off here. Eh? But you also, I mean, it's very personal, but I mean, you were saying to me with your, your dad's ashes. Yep. Special yeah. place for you guys. Yeah, as a family, we, we love this place and we've been here a lot and uh, yeah. No, well, I mean, it, for, for me, it's, uh, it's cool that you did that long track from PE. It's lucky to sit around a fire and talk the, a bit of nonsense. The garden route, um, I'll do it every day. Um, but I mean, you've got, you don't only have a garden route, you've got all these other trails and tracks that no, you've introduced. Hey, quite. The views to as well, yeah. and myself. Yeah. No, listen, I mean, this is what like... an adventure. This is like day five, and, and it's... What an adventure. I don't know where, I don't know where we're going to end up, but it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty special, it really is. And what a magnificent vehicle, and yeah, I think the partnership is just, yeah. it's fantastic. It's felt like it's Isuzu country. I promise you, all the places we've been through the crew, that's we've what we've seen a lot of them today. That photograph we took today. Yeah. There, four. Was, there were four Isuzus, yeah. all part different generations. Good yeah. to see the old 2.4 with the, the World Contact 4x4, the Continental tyre, which that's... was the very first tyre that we fitted. Mm. That was the, the start of the relationship with Isuzu. So it's good to see the progression. That's an original Bucky. Heading through the Bavions, the guy at the gate was telling me, ah, he's got the old 2.8, you know, raves about it. And, and they all rave about it. it's gravel abilities because we know it's rugged reliability of the vehicle but it's that combination that the tire on that vehicle is what also makes it good so Suzu have made a, a really bold call and they fitted a proper 50 50 all-terrain which means that when you get it it's got fantastic tar manners it's quiet um, it's good in wet and dry mm. uh, conditions on tar but likewise when you go off-road you don't have to have that initial concern about am I going to get a tire Penetrated by stones, yeah. sharp rocks. Um, am I going to get a puncture? Not with us. I know you guys all prescribed 2.2 on the 83s, but I dropped it low. I made it 1.8 because we're like six hours on the gravel. It's fine. If it's a good gravel road, that's absolutely perfect. And that's what guys don't realize. You know, you can drop the tire pressures in those tires because they're made to live in both environments. You can't go and do that in your low profile sports tire or if you're running in an SUV or a bucky that's running on strictly road tires. The sidewalls are, are far more reinforced than a road tyre. And a road tyre, the pressure, the air pressure has to maintain the structure. Whereas these tyres, because of the reinforcement, you can reduce your pressures because they're reinforced. So they can still carry the load, but you get the better grip. And flatter, flatter footprint. 
Yes. No stress about it coming off the rim, which is crucial too. Because if we're going your, in the sand, which bead, we're going to... You've got a metal bead this thick that holds the tire onto the rim. Come, baby. You've just got to remember that if you go down from sand and you go down a lot... That what do you run? Got like a, point, can I run 0.5 on that? No. No. Point, no. Point 0.8? Uh, I would say the first thing you do when you get onto sand, depending on the type of sand and the heat, yeah. if it's very hot and very fine, maybe 0.9, okay. 0.8. Also with that weight, um, I must remember, because you've got the rooftop tents and all the other stuff. I would go there. to one bar, yeah. and if you start getting stuck, then you drop slightly okay. from there, but you go to a bar. Ready, one, two, three. Okay. Ching, chong, cha. Ching, chong, cha. Okay, <laughs> so you brine. <laughs> Can you brine? Now you did a bloody good fight. Let me have another sip of water and... Absolutely. Just don't buffalo that, eh? You know it's left hand rules. Yes, this okay. is my left hand. No, no. <laughs> We're reversed. <laughs> no, but listen, thanks, boy. It's been like a... Cheers. It's been nice to hang out. You don't Great have adventure. to go tomorrow, you know that. I think I might stay. We're all going to the hell. It's a hell of a lack of black. Fire going. Carries on sweating, but it starts to get crisp. Yeah. But that thing works like a charm. My dad made that. Check the handle. He turned it on his lathe. Check it. Turn that. Amazing. And that's how he always bribes, a little hook. This is like a bride on. Uh, I'll stop drinking when Captain Morgan puts his leg down. Oh, there you go, right. I'm getting my steps up. Next time on Just to See How Far It Is. Morning. The cup says the good life, and it is. Big Bay. No surf though, which is a bit sad, but I'll tell you what, I'm going for a paddle. And uh, Chopper over here went and blew the fuse of the cigarette light in the cubby hole, so I'm the, uh, at, uh, at the Isuzu dealership in George is, uh, is helping us start putting a new fuse in and we'll be uh, up on the road in no time. Destination to hell. Cycle there and now cycle, cycle back. back. So we were from Prince Albert into the yeah. hell yesterday. Yeah. And from the hell back to here. And why? Is there something wrong with you guys? Because we have the, the thinnest, lightest. That, no, that wants to th that came here once and just kind of thought, ew, that'd be cool for the posse to come and ride. Said the 62 kilo hobbit over there. It's going to be something really special for me. Spend a night in the hell, have a chat with the locals, and find out why on earth you'd want to live so far from civilization.